Hey everyone, so um, I was going to make a video about uh, signing up to Bitfinex. See, my search was for IOTA. I wanted to buy IOTA, the, the crypto, and I couldn't buy that on eToro where I normally trade. So I've had to go through the process of finding out where to buy Bitcoin. Uh, see the links here? I realized it's this side now. So I signed up for Coinbase to buy Bitcoin. Uh, I bought the Bitcoin, I introduced the Exodus wallet, which is a wallet I'm using to just store stuff in. Um, how to set up two-factor authentication on Coinba Coinbase. Uh, and then how to transfer the Bitcoin from Coinbase to the Exodus wallet. So those processes I've sort of gone through and you can see links up here. Um, but if you don't just want to store Bitcoin, uh, you like me, you want to buy IOTA, or, um, specifically IOTA, because it's quite rare. Uh, I only found Bitfinex where you could buy it. And I just went to the Bitfinex site and I tried to sign up. And about five days ago, six days ago, it came under a DDoS attack, distributed denial of service. Basically some hackers, uh, some people, not really hackers, but they tried to take down the site. What they do is they get lots of computers all over the world, or things which have an internet connection can be programmed to request information about the site, either just try and access the site, or in this case, to set up millions of fake profiles. And they do this because it overloads the server on Bitfinex, uh, it can't handle all the requests, and it just shuts it down. So someone's obviously trying to mess with Bitfinex, and Bitfinex, you know, are mitigating that attack, but what they've done is they've closed off, at the moment, all new signups. I can't sign in, so I can't create a new account, so I can't buy IOTA. So I went looking and I found this one, Binance. Binance is another crypto exchange and they sell IOTA, or that you can transfer Bitcoin for IOTA here. So uh, I've signed up. Now the sign up process is really um, similar to uh, Coinbase. It's the same stuff. You have to you know, upload your, link it to a phone number, verify your email, upload the different types of identity. If you wanna see that process done on Coinbase, here's the link to that video because it's quite lengthy. It's fairly similar. They give you an encrypted key, a special key, uh, which you need to write down and keep offline. It's in case everything goes wrong, you can get back into your funds again, very important. But now here I am. So this is this is Binance here. It's just another exchange, another crypto exchange, where on this one, uh, cryptos are traded for other cryptos. So you can get Bitcoin in here and you can trade it for any one of these, any one of these many, many coins. There are so many cryptos now, altcoins and tokens, which you can which you can buy. These are all different coins measured against uh, Bitcoin. So that's uh, the price of that one against Bitcoin. So how much, how many Bitcoins do you need to buy one of them? That's what we're seeing in this number here. So uh, with Ethereum to Bitcoin, you need that many Bitcoins, that much of one Bitcoin to buy one Ethereum. So having a look around this, basically, is because it's quite, you know, what have you got? Here you've got the actual exchange. I'm going to put it in basic mode. So the exchange is where you actually trade stuff. You trade your Bitcoin for IOTA, your Bitcoin for Ethereum, or your Bitcoin for Cardano, or whatever you want to do. So I'm going to use ba uh, Bitcoin as a base, because everyone kind of knows Bitcoin. So we'll have one solid idea, and then we'll transfer that for, for other coins. Okay, so here's the exchange, and here I can buy IOTA or sell IOTA. Uh, I've already put IOTA in here. I, I added IOTA, that's why it's sort of showing up everywhere. I click this, and now it's showing everything to do with IOTA. So buy IOTA or sell IOTA. And I'm buying it uh, for Bitcoin. So it's IOTA versus Bitcoin, okay? So here, it's showing the price of the current Bitcoin and how much IOTA do I want to buy. So here, roughly, you see up on the left, it will show you the last price. So roughly, um, $4.00 for one iota, okay? So this much Bitcoin, 0 0.00021903 Bitcoin will buy you one iota. And that much Bitcoin is currently worth that much in dollars. So they kind of try and make it a little easy for us to understand what's happening. So uh, how do I get Bitcoin into here, into Binance, into my account, so that I can actually trade it for iota? How do I do that? How do I move the Bitcoin in here in the beginning? Um, now, how I do that is, I'm on the exchange at the moment where I can buy and sell things. Uh, here, funds. See over here, funds. So if I go into the funds, deposits and withdrawals, that's basically my wallets. Okay, so we talked about wallets. You have wallets which you store on your phone, wallets with Exodus is stored on my computer. There are cloud-based wallets. 
There's the ones which are actually, you take out, you store them on like a little USB drive, the offline wallets. Then there's the wallets you get on the exchanges. So if I buy something on a crypto exchange, it automatically gets stored in my wallet for the relevant currency on that exchange. And then I can just leave it there, which is a little unsettling because, you know, there's so many hacking attempts on these exchanges. Um, that's why people have all these other wallets and they want to move it off the exchange, you know, so it's supposedly safer. Um, but here we are, here, here are all the, the wallets that I have on, on Binance. So these would be my Binance wallets. That would be my Cardano wallet. This would be, you know, my Bitcoin Cash wallet. And over here on the side, you can see deposits or withdraw. So if you're depositing, uh, let's go to Bitcoin. So here we are, BTC. If I click deposit, it means I want to see, look, important, send only Bitcoin to this deposit address. Sending other currency to this address may result in the loss of your deposit. Um, there we go. So this, as we've seen before, this is my Bitcoin wallet address on Binance. So what I do is I copy this here. Copy. Boom. If I copy that, success. What I now have to do is I have to go to the other exchange. So I will go to Coinbase. Here we are. I'm back on Coinbase. Um, and if I go to my accounts in Coinbase, I can see here's my Bitcoin wallet, here's my Ethereum wallet, here's my Litecoin wallet, and my Euros. So if I go to my Bitcoin wallet in Coinbase, I'm trying to send Bitcoin from Coinbase, where I've bought it, to Binance, okay, where I want to trade it for something else. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to send, and it says enter a BTC address. So it's asking us to enter a Bitcoin wallet address. So the wallet address that I just copied off of Binance, that's my Bitcoin wallet address on Binance. So I'm just going to paste that in here and I'm going to withdraw it from my BTC wallet on, on here, on Coinbase. So it's going from Coinbase to my Binance wallet. Here, I'm just going to do send max. Okay, send max is, you know, how much can I send in total? Oh wow, the network fee is massive. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and buy some more Bitcoin. Because what we just saw is that I was trying to transfer, uh, you know, $30 worth or 30 euros worth of Bitcoin. And most of it was being taken up in fees. So I want to see, uh, will those fees go up or just stay the same if I transfer more Bitcoin? I want to see what those fees are. I think they're really associated with the uh, network fee for um Bitcoin itself. Bitcoin is obviously the, the network that runs Bitcoin is supported by all the people with little computers or big computers all over the world who are mining the currency and also acting to verify the transactions. They're the Bitcoin network, the processing network. So there's a miners fee with every transaction which sort of gets distributed back to them and it's to sort of pay them, to compensate them for actually mining, for finding the coins and for also processing it, for being that network which processes all the transactions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, I've gone to the buy and sell page again. I'm going to buy from uh, this bank here. I'm going to buy uh, 80 euros worth of Bitcoin. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to use the other account, this one here. And I'm going to buy 80 euros worth of Bitcoin. That will give me that much BTC. Bitcoin's become, so again, I have to uh, confirm the buy. So we'll just see, basically, it was, I think it was, what was it, $12, I'll watch the video afterwards, $12 or $14 as a, as a network fee. And it was for, for transferring a very small amount of Bitcoin. I want to see if that goes up or stays the same if I try and transfer more Bitcoin. I think it will actually stay the same. I think that fee is going to stay the same. It's for processing the, the actual request. It's not because of the amount of money I'm doing. It's just if I move that much information contained in the trade around the around the Bitcoin network, then they charge a processing fee. I don't think it's going to change if I charge more, uh, if I move more. So now, look, I have 97.73 in Bitcoin. So I'm going to try and move that to my address. I'm going to go back to Binance and I'm going to press deposit again on BTC just to make sure I've got the right address. There's my Bitcoin wallet address on Binance. I've copied it. I just make sure again, yeah, I've copied it. And now I'm going to go back to Coinbase. Uh, and I'm going to go to my accounts again, my Bitcoin wallet. I want to send Bitcoin. I'm going to put in my Binance Bitcoin wallet address here. That's my wallet address on Binance, my Bitcoin wallet address on Binance. I'm going to send it from my Bitcoin wallet and I'm going to send Max, okay? 
So uh, there we are. The network fee is exactly the same. So the network fee is for processing any request. It doesn't matter how much you send. I think if I send, you know, a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin, it will be the same fee. So it doesn't make sense sending eight dollars worth of Bitcoin and having a 13, eight euros worth of Bitcoin having a 13 euro fee. I may as well send more Bitcoin and uh, keep the network fee the same. So I'm going to press continue. And now I have to put in my uh, Google Authenticator code again. Uh, so my Coinbase Google Authenticator code, which I set up in a previous video up here, if you want to see how to set this up. It's just an extra layer of security um, to make it all a bit safer. There we are, my transaction is on the way. So what I'll do now is it's sent it. I can see here pending, sent Bitcoin is pending, 98, 72 euros worth of Bitcoin is being sent. If I click on that, uh, there we are, that's where it's going, confirmations, no confirmations yet. So it has to be confirmed by the network, that's what that fee's for, it's all the miners and all the people running the nodes which process the Bitcoin transaction. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go back to Binance here and I just has to have to, I'm gonna go to the history page on my funds, I'm gonna see deposits history, you have no deposit history, but there we are, so the deposit's on its way and I'm gonna wait a while until it does arrive and then I'll carry on with how do I then transfer that Bitcoin for IOTA, okay? So I'll leave it there just for now.